Number 17. To get up on the roof, a person, mass of 70 kilograms, places a 6 meter aluminum ladder, mass 10 kilograms, against the house on a concrete pad with the base of the ladder 2 meters from the house. The ladder rests against a plastic rain gutter, which we can assume to be frictionless. The center of mass of the ladder is 2 meters from the bottom. The person is standing 3 meters from the bottom. What are the magnitudes of the forces on the ladder at the top and the bottom? All right, so here's a little picture. The ladder is in green, six meters long. It's resting against the building. The ladder, uh, the base of the ladder over here is located two meters away from the base of the building. Now they start telling us that the uh, center of mass of the ladder is two meters from the bottom. Well, does that mean two meters in the y direction or does that mean two meters from the bottom of that ladder over here? I'm gonna assume that it means two meters from the bottom of the ladder, okay, and measured along the axis of the ladder. All right, so that being said, let me first put in that um, vector. So let's put a little dot here. We'll draw that down. That will rep uh, that will represent the uh, weight of the ladder. All right, I'll call this the FL, the force. That actually looks like a one, right? So let's just actually detail that as WL, okay? Weight of the ladder. And that's located two meters from the bottom. I'm gonna leave that out of the picture just for now um, because it's gonna get a little messy with all these numbers all over the place. Just remember that. So now the person is, now there's a person standing three meters, right, uh, from that, from the bottom. Again, I'm gonna assume that it's measured in the same way. So let me put a little dot here. He or she is now in the middle. And that's going to be the weight of the person. So let's call that the weight sub P for weight of the person. And now we are left to now figure out what the uh, directions are and the magnitudes of the remaining forces. You might say, well, what are the other remaining forces in the problem? So there's actually going to be uh, three other forces. Now, we know that the, uh, the forces have to be balanced, right, in this particular system. Why? Because the ladder is in equilibrium. It's not moving. Well, hopefully so. Otherwise, that'd be a problem for the person. So... Let's assume that um, all the forces are balanced and it is in equilibrium. Therefore, I know that there must be a Y component that balances or counteracts uh, these uh, Y, negative Y uh, forces. Where will that force be? Well, remember the ladder is resting on the ground here. So I'm gonna assume that this would be represented as the no uh, normal force. Okay, so I'll call that F sub N. And just know that I'm going to write what I just said over here, that F sub N will equal the, essentially, I mean, if I'm, content, if I'm thinking about the signs, right, it's essentially going to be the negative, which of the weights and stuff, right, it's going to be the inverse sign. So this will be the weight of the ladder plus then the weight of the person. And remember, these weights will be negative, so overall this whole thing should come out to be positive, right, because they're pointing down. Uh, that takes care of that. Now... Um, there's another force that's at play on the ground, right? They didn't say anything about this area being frictionless. So you have to think about this. If there were no friction here, what would happen uh, if you tried to place the ladder up on the wall? And they also told you that there's no friction at the top. Well, it's going to come sliding back down, right? It's going to come sliding down and this whole part of the ladder is going to move out to the left. So there must be some force holding it from sliding out. Well, guess what that force is called? The frictional force. Remember, I'm concerned with forces acting on the ladder, okay? And the force of friction acting on the ladder is pointing to the right to hold the ladder or the bottom of the ladder in place. So let me just say that this one, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna move this to value, move it down here a little bit. And this is going to be the force due to friction. Now, the ladder is also resting against the top of the building, right? So now, remember that all the, uh, Y's and X's have to be balanced. And so far, this is a Y component. These are Y components. And this is my only X component, right? So what direction do you think must the vector be pointing up here produced by the building? Well, it has to be pointing in exactly this direction. All right, so it's going to be essentially the opposite of the uh, frictional force there. All right, they're basically going to be equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign. So I'll call that the F of the building, okay, F sub B. So note that the, you know, force of friction will equal then the uh, negative of the force of the building. 
And there may have been one of the force, but remember they told us that the ladder rests against the plastic gutter and it's frictionless because you might say to yourself, well, wait, isn't there some friction up here? And when, if the ladder right, were to start moving, it would start moving down the wall like that and wouldn't friction be opposing it so I should have another vector pointing up? Well, if there were friction, then yes. But since there's no friction, thank goodness, well, at least for the problem, not for the sake of the person on the ladder, um, it, it'll simplify things a little bit. So this is the complete picture. All right. Now, how do we now go about calculating some stuff? So uh, main thing is we don't know what the force of friction is, okay, nor do we know what this force produced by the building is. So we have to look at this problem through uh, torques. Why? I can't look at it through some of the forces because I don't know either one. I know they're going to be equal, but I don't know what it is, what they're equal to. I mean, they're going to be equal to one another, so their sums will be zero, but I don't know either of them. So that's an equation with two unknowns, can't solve it. So I got to look at this from the perspective of uh, torques. All right, so some of the torques will equal zero. Now, how many torques are there? Well, first thing you got to do is figure out what axis of rotation you want to choose. Remember, you always have to choose an axis of rotation. So why don't we choose the axis of rotation at the top here? Why? Well, because that will get rid of this particular force. Why? Because, in terms of my torque problem, if this is the axis of rotation and this particular force acts right at the axis, its lever arm is zero and therefore the torque is zero. So that sounds like a very attractive proposition to place the axis of rotation there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place it there. You could have placed it somewhere else too, but that's the easiest location to place it. So assuming that this is the axis of rotation, let's try to uh, now write out all the torques. So essentially there are going to be four torques, right? Why? Because there are four forces acting at a distance from the axis of rotation. One, two, three, four. Great. Let's detail them all, okay? So we have here the torque produced by the person. I'm just going to add them all together and then I'm going to consider the signs. The force produced, excuse me, the torque produced by the uh, ladder. The torque produced by the normal force. And then the torque produced by the force of friction. And that all has to equal zero. Okay, so now the only thing I don't really know is the force due to friction, right? And I know the force of friction is going to be tied up within this particular term. So uh, what we're going to do eventually is solve this equation for this term. Uh, but first, let's, like I said, consider the signs. Very quickly, the torque produced by the person here, if that force were applied, and this was my axis, it would rotate the uh, uh, arm here counterclockwise, so therefore it's positive. That's good. The weight, the torque produced by the weight, same thing. Rotate it counterclockwise, so that's positive. The normal force, if that's applied, it's going to rotate the uh, axis clockwise. So therefore, this should be negative. So let's make that adjustment. Negative. And how about now the torque? Uh, excuse me. The, the that was a that was a combination between torque and force. The torque, and uh, that would simplify things, right? So the force uh, of friction, if it acts on the arm at this location, is going to produce a counterclockwise rotation. Therefore, this is positive. All right. So now we got everything we need. So let's just solve this for the torque of the, the frictional torque essentially should be equal to now the torque produced by the normal force minus the torque produced by the uh, person minus the torque produced by the ladder. Now, we know we have to solve for force, so we gotta basically break these things up right into their perpendicular component, uh, the lever arm and the forces. So now remember that torque, I can rewrite a third equation over here that torque is equal to the perpendicular lever arm length uh, multiplied by the force. So I'm actually going to use all the R's I'm going to use in here are going to be the perpendicular uh, distance. Okay, so uh, let's do that. So let's detail this. So this is going to be, remember, all the R's are going to be perpendicular. I'm not going to keep writing perpendicular all the time, but just keep that in mind. So the lever arm of the frictional force multiplied by the force due to friction would equal now and the normal force lever arm multiplied by the normal force. I think we can see how where we're going from here. Uh, minus R sub P, FP, minus RL, FL. Solving this whole thing for fr oops, frictional force, I just have to divide out RF, right? So my formula looks just like this now. This would be RN, FN, minus RP, 
FP minus RL FL all over RF. Let's put a little box around that. Okay, in order to find frictional force, I gotta know all, all these variables, so let's figure it out. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna redraw the uh, um, ladder, just like this, okay? Let's first, here's the axis. Let's talk about the first uh, item. So here's the weight of the person, okay? That weight of the person pointing directly down. Now, what I need to do is show the line of action, okay, for that force. So I'm gonna dot a line straight down. And now what I wanna do is I wanna figure out the perpendicular distance between the axis and this line of action. What would that be detailed like? Well, that would be exactly this particular line right here. Okay, so here is my, uh, what should we call this? Here is Rn. No, excuse me, that's, <laughs> sorry, this is Rp, all right? Now, what I, what I also realize, I can kind of create a little square here, right? Or not a square, I don't know if all the sides are equal, but I can create a little rectangle, okay? So I know that if I could find, let's say, this value, it would be the same as that value, right? And this value would be the same as this value, etc. So now, what do we know? So we can look at this in one of two ways. Now remember, the black was the ladder. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close this up to show you the bigger triangle at play here. All right. That didn't really work as I wanted. Let's see if I can get that just right. Yeah, that's going to be good enough. So now, um, remember the length of the ladder is 6 meters and the length of this bottom piece is two, okay? We know that the, let me move this a little bit, we know that the person is three meters up from the bottom. If he's three meters up from the bottom, that means he's also three meters, the hypotenuse in that triangle, right, is also three meters. So let me put a little three in here. Okay, now, what else do I, remember, I'm interested in finding this side. Well, is there any other piece that I might be able to find here in terms of the triangle? Well, there actually might be, right? Um, either I can find one of the sides or I could find one of the angles in one of the two triangles. So how do we do that? Well, I can find this angle. Why? Because I know the adjacent and hypotenuse. So I can use cosine there to find that angle. And then knowing that these two, this triangle I'm gonna outline in gold, these are similar triangles, the one in gold and the bigger one in black, right? Those are similar triangles. So I know that these angles must be equivalent to one another. Let me put that in black. So I'm gonna solve for this. So how do we do that? Well, again, we're gonna use the inverse sine, correct? So now let's think about that. So, excuse me, cosine. So now the angle in there is gonna be equal to the cosine of negative one of the adjacent side two over six, okay. That's what this theta would be, okay? And that would also be equal to this theta, right? Okay, now, how can we go about solving this? Well, remember, I need, I wanna find RP. I know this angle, because I could just plug this into the calculator if I wanted, and I know this hypotenuse, right? So what I could do is I could just do trig, right, and solve that. All right, remember this RP is the same as that RP. So we can also simplify it a little bit. Realize that this angle, I'm also using the cosine again, right? So essentially, I can just use the, the ratio here of six to two. Actually, I don't even need the cosine, right? If you do the math, you'll see, you're gonna just take the inverse cosine and then do cosine again of it. You can just think about this as similar triangles, right? You can do a proportion. Two over six is equal to, make sure you're consistent, x over 3, right? What do you think x should be? It should be 1, okay? And that x is, instead of writing x, I can write rp. That's the x. They're similar triangles, right? This side is similar to this side. And then this hypotenuse is similar to the bigger hypotenuse. That's it. Easy. So here you already see what rp is, right? rp will be equal to 1. So that sounds great to me. So I actually know RP, all right? I know this term. Okay, so let me just write some of these down. 
just backtrack a little bit. So RP, I'll write them over here on the side, I think. RP is equal to one. All right, next. Now what I wanna do is figure out RN. Well, how am I gonna figure out R? Oh, actually, let me not do N yet. Let me do um, RL. Now that would be produced by the force of the ladder. Now remember, I just did the person, but the ladder is just gonna be located a little further down. And guess what I'm gonna do? Same technique. Okay, I'm gonna make a box here. Same exact thing. Similar triangles again. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through the whole rigmarole. I'm just gonna set it up. So two over six should be equal to, I'll call this now RL over What's now the length of this hypotenuse, the longer hypotenuse? Well, the ladder was located to, excuse me, the, yeah, the center of mass of the ladder was located two feet up from the bottom, and therefore this particular length is gonna be four. Okay, so plug in your four there. Similar triangles again, just a simple proportion. So now what does this work out to be? Well, all you have to do is do the math, right? So two times four is eight, that's equal to RL times six, right? And then divide out the six from both sides. And what do we get? We get four thirds. So four thirds is equal to RL. So let's write that over here. RL is equal to four thirds. Okay. And let's erase all this stuff. Wonderful. And now let's do RN. So that's gonna be for the normal force. So remember the normal force is pointing up. Okay, so what am I gonna do here again? Well, guess what? Here's my box. There it is, the whole thing now. So actually, I already know if you realize this whole length would be considered the lever arm, right? Because the force is acting in that direction. This is the full lever arm up here. That's the perpendicular distance. So that should be easy peasy, should be two. Okay, so that we know. All right, let's just simplify that a little bit. Just clean it up. All right, so let's write that down now that we know R N is equal to two. Okay, so we know all of these values. Well, let me do one more since I'm on the topic of R's. Let's do RF. Now remember the last force in here was this uh, frictional force that I'm drawing all the way at the bottom of the screen, guys, in red. Actually, you know what, I'll put in yellow. All the way at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so that's the force due to friction. Now, this is the axis upon which it's acting. What's the perpendicular distance to the um, to the axis of rotation. It's gonna be this length, correct? How do we find that length? Well, look at your big, look at your big triangle here, right? You know hypotenuse, you know one of the sides, you can do Pythagorean's theorem, okay? So basically, let's do that. So I'm just gonna simplify the picture. All right, so now RF will equal square root of six squared minus two squared. Okay, so we, we got that. Oh man, all right, so we got all those pieces. Guess what's left? So now we have to find the normal force, the force of the person, and the force of the ladder. These should be easy, right? Because they told us all the masses. So let me, let me move these values actually on up into this upper corner over here. So we know all the R's, I'll put, I know they're all different colors. You know what I'm gonna do? Let's do this. Let's make them all black. So we'll go to color, and we'll make them all black. All right, so now let's take a look at all the uh, forces. Okay, now this should be pretty simple. The force of the person, right, is really the weight of the person. So I know I'm using different, I'm using W over here, F, you know, F over here, but they remember weight is a force. So the uh, force of the person will equal the mass of that person, which was 70 kilograms, multiplied by gravity, 9.8. Right, so that should be easy. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that value on over here now. How about the force of the um, ladder? Again, same thing, force of the ladder, the weight of the ladder, which is 10 kilograms, it was given times 9.8. Okay, and then all I need now is the normal force. And remember, we already defined that to be the summation of the two weights. It would just be the opposite in sign, but remember, since we're doing torques, we already we plug in the absolute values of the forces, right? Because the, the negatives are taken into account in terms of the torques. So basically, the normal force will be equal to here, will be equal to, uh, you know, if I do a little math, it's, the, it's gonna be 80 times 9.8, because the total mass then multiplied by gravity. And 
voila, we got what we need. So let's try to now plug this all in. So the frictional force, okay, will be equal to Rn. Rn we said was two. Two times Fn. Fn we said it was 80 times 9.8. Now, obviously, you could do the math already, but I'm going to try to do everything as accurately as possible. You might have to round otherwise. RP is 1. Great. That's going to be multiplied by FP. FP, we said, was 70 times 9.8. 70. Let me make that a little neater. 170 times 9.8. Times 9.8. Last but not least, it's going to be then minus RL. And RL, we said, was 4 thirds. So 4 thirds over then the, the weight of the ladder, right? Uh, FL, which is 10 times 9.8. So let's say that's going to be 10 times, I know I'm running out of space there, 9.8. Okay, great. That whole thing now divided by RF. And we said RF should then be the square root of 6 squared minus 2 squared. Okie doke. And let's calculate. So... We got 2 times 80 times 9.8 minus 70 times 9.8 uh, minus 4 divided by 3 times 10 times 9.8. And that whole thing will now be divided by the square root of 6 squared plus, excuse me, minus, minus 2 squared. So 132.8 or aka 133. So the force due to friction is going to be 133 newtons. Okay, I rounded there. But that's fine. That's the force due to friction. So that's FF in my picture. Okay, that's the FF. Now, remember we said that the force of friction will be equal to the force due to the building. Okay, so in terms of answering this question, what, is the, what are the magnitudes of the forces on the ladder at the top and the bottom? We found the top easily because there are only one force at the top. It's just the force of the building and that's equal but opposite in magn uh, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So we can say that the force at the top, right, is going to be equal to 133 newtons. Now you don't have to put the negative sign, although technically in my picture it's pointing in that negative direction. But I could have chose the ladder to go over here and then it would have been positive. So don't worry about it, just put the magnitude. Also it just wants to know the magnitude, so that's easy. Uh, now, what's the force at the bottom? Now, here's the thing. You're, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, there's two forces at the bottom. There's a normal force and the force of friction. How do I find the combined force? Oh, combined force. Wait a minute. Am I adding vectors together? Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are adding vectors together. So how do we add vectors together? It's simple, right? You're basically going to set it up as a triangle. I mean, there's only two vectors here. Otherwise, if it were more than two, right, you'd have to... And, by the way, these two vectors are purely in the y and purely in the x. Otherwise, you might have to, you know, do the component table and all that stuff. So this is wonderful that they are both. Uh, one is in the y, one is in the x. So I can actually use this formula. That the force at the bottom should, should be equal to the square root of the sum of all the x's squared plus sum of all the y's squared. Or just the x's squared and the y's squared, right? Because I basically have to take the result in here, but there's only two forces, one in the x, one in the y. So it's basically just x squared plus y squared, right? In other words, the x is, I know I keep erasing, but I'm showing you different things. The x is just the force of friction, right? Squared plus then the normal force squared. Okay, I'm running out of room. That's why I keep erasing. And what's the force of friction? Well, we just found it, ladies and gentlemen, right? We found that to be 133 newtons. So now I'm going to, I'm actually going to put in a slightly more exact answer. So it's really 132.818 because we rounded, right? 132.818 squared, then plus the normal force, which we found to simply be 80 times 9.8, right? So let's do that. 80 times 9.8, and that whole thing would then be squared. So plug that all into the calculator. All right, if you need, you can draw a picture with the two vectors, right? You draw your coordinate system. Here's the force of friction. Here's the normal force. The resultant vector is then that what you're calculating, okay? All right, simple enough. Let's do it. So second square root, 132.818 squared plus square uh, parenthesis 80 times 9.8. And that whole thing will be squared. And there we go, 795. 
So 795 newtons. The end. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. All right, I hope this video helped. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button. And uh, if you're looking for more help, we do offer private tutoring. And we also offer very reasonable rates in terms of group classes. So if you had a couple of classmates or a couple of friends that needed help on the same topic, you're in the same class, give us a holler. All right, we'd be happy to help. Thank you very much.